What's the right type of organizational structure for the current and emerging life cycle stage of your business? This is a really important question. Every CEO must be able to answer it. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to answer that question using a map. First, I'm going to present the map. I'm going to give you a high level education on how to use that map to identify where your core business and any business units are at in their current stage of development. And then using that same map, I'm going to reveal the type of organizational structure you need to have in place in order to drive your business and any business units into the next stage of growth. Let's get to it. I really like this map. It's a great tool to help set strategy with you and your team and quickly get people you know, on the same page about where we're at in our current stage of development and therefore what does our next stage strategy need to be. And the core concept is pretty simple. It's a recognition that everything has a life cycle to it and that you got to manage to the stage. So it's not too dissimilar to being a parent. Imagine a parent of a teenager whose their child's 13, but they're, they're parenting that teenager like they're still three. <laughs> Disaster, right? Business is not too dissimilar. You got to apply the right logic, the right strategy to the right stage of development. And if you get that wrong or out of sequence, you're going to regret it. So what this shows is that effective business strategy is really an alignment of three life cycles. Product life cycle, which products go through a set of stages from pilot it, to nail it, to scale it, to milk it, or at any time kill it. And it's very critical that you're piloting products for innovator types of customers. You're nailing products for early adopter types of customers. You're scaling products in step with early majority customers. And as every business, business unit, product, market ages, when you get there and you will, you're milking products for late majority lagger customers and using those proceeds to fund new initiatives or anytime you might need to kill or sell off a product or a business unit because the growth market just isn't there anymore. And this red box here indicates the dominant force. Now, this is organizational physics language. We, we have a code we use to kind of call out the force that should be present at all levels of a system. So a force you can think of like a focus, a, a pace, an approach. Naturally, when you're piloting new products for innovator customers, that business unit accountable for that product market fit needs to have a very high innovating force. That's the, the capital I here. And when we begin to drive for early nail it, we're working with early adopter customers or under pressure, they have a pain, they want it solved. We want to see a high producing force in that unit. And in late nail it, we have systematized how we sell, service, and deliver, which gives us a platform to begin to innovate again and really scale it for early majority customers. So the idea is that you're seeking alignment the right sequence between all three life cycles, product, market, and execution. And if you have high alignment and you're doing the right things in sequence, then you're going to thrive. And if you get out of alignment or you try to skip a stage, you get out of sequence, then you're going to struggle and you're likely going to fail. So that's life cycle strategy in a nutshell. Now, the goal for all of this is that you're trying to drive your core business into a place where it's got the right balance of things, right? It's got the right strategy, culture, the right structure to execute. It's got good processes, the right people in place. And it, it's a well-oiled machine, you know? It is capable of executing on the core business and then launching new growth initiatives, new business units or new products that will go through their own life cycle stages over time. And that creates a state of perpetual renewal. You don't want to allow your core business to get over on the, the decline stage. You know, if you do, it's very hard to reignite growth. It's very hard to manage new early stage growth initiatives from a laggard stage core business. That's why you see big industry leaders acquire a new startup and they flub it up, right? The startup just fails under the inertia of that big, heavy, bureaucratic uh, core business. It's why grandparents are great at visiting kids and grant their grandkids, but they're not ideal to raise and parent the grandkids full time. They're different life cycle stage. Similarly, when you're a startup, you wouldn't want to launch new business units or new too many new products too quickly. It's like being a teen pregnancy, right? The teen isn't capable of managing more than themselves, right? So you try to get the core business into here, and then you can begin to launch 
new products, new business units that go through their own life cycle stages. Okay, you get the idea. So what do we do with this information? Well, on the map, the first thing you do is you place where your core business is in its life cycle development. And in this example, I've placed the core business here, the yellow boxes, just think of that like a yellow post-it note. This company, its core business is in late nail it, early scale it stage, and they have some entropy in the system. So what that means is that the core business is off of this blue parabola, which is the strategic execution line. They're off the blue parabola because they have some issues, internal issues that are preventing them from deploying all their time, resources, and capabilities towards the strategy. They're, they're, they've got a flawed structure, They've kind of outgrown their old structure and they're struggling a little bit. And they actually didn't know they were struggling until they tried to launch this new business unit, business unit number one. And what they found was the structure they had in place to drive forward the core business. It worked pretty well until the company kind of reached a stage of complexity, uh, size that it just out, outgrew its old structure. And now they're really realizing it when they've tried to launch the business unit number one and they're really realizing the limitations of their current design. So this is a scenario I know really well from my consulting practice. It's kind of where I specialize. I'm only bringing it up here to show the idea of the strategy map is you want to identify where your core business and any business units are in their development. That's going to dictate your strategy. And the strategy must create a step in sequence between products, markets, and execution capabilities. If it doesn't, you're going to get into trouble. So you figure out where you are now, and now I want to show you then what, what does that tell you about your structure? Well, we can map the right structural type, generally speaking, to these life cycle stages. So here, if you're piloting a new product or initiative for innovator customers, you would put very limited structure on that business or business unit, right? Mark Andreessen, the famed venture capitalist, he put it perfectly. He goes, all right, there's two classes of problems in the life of every business. There's a set of pre-product market fit problems, that's the piloted stage, and then a set of post-product market fit problems, that's the mid-nail it to scale it stage, okay? He's right. So when you have an initiative, a new business unit, or a core business in the piloted stage, you put very little structure on that. You know, design around people, it's, it's hustle, it's grit, it's a garage, keep it light. But as you begin to move into the nail it stage and you're working with early adopter customers, now is the right time to begin to adopt a functional structure. Adopt a functional structure based on the rules that I'm teaching you in these videos, and you'll solve a lot of the bottlenecks and problems that emerge from a company that outgrows its old structure, which will happen naturally as the company moves from pilot it into mid nail it and beyond. So in the mid nail it stage to late nail it stage is where I like to adopt a functional structure, we take the same core team, but rather than everybody wearing a bunch of hats, we start to get them into roles where they can really focus and thrive. We set up the business so that it can drive on its core strategy and also pilot and nail new initiatives and that kind of thing. Now, if you start with a functional structure like I'm going to teach you and use the rules of structure, what will happen is that it gets very easy to then evolve that functional structure into a matrix structure, a geography structure based structure, uh, market-based one, doesn't matter, right? The structure has to support the strategy, but if you've built it from the ground up with a functional mindset, you can kind of use those building blocks and redesign the structure for the next stage of growth. Now that will take you very far, but if the core business gets over here into the late majority laggard stage, then the inertia is gonna be really high and you're gonna have to create a break or an escape from the legacy structure in order to fund, launch, and successfully grow new business units. So again, the goal is to get your core business here and keep it here where it's capable of launching and growing new initiatives, right? It's agile, it's responsive, it's got the right structure for this stage of growth, it's capable of launching and, and scaling new initiatives. But if it gets over here, that's when you're gonna have to create a break or an escape from the legacy structure, okay? So piloted stage initiatives, very limited structure. In the nail it stage, functional structure. In the scale it stage, you begin to evolve the structure to the strategy and the different stages of the business units that you have. 
And if you're in a milk it stage with a core business, you got to break it apart, create an escape so that new initiatives can launch and grow. Now, I just gave you a lot, of, a lot of ideas in a short amount of time. It's easy to misunderstand what I'm saying if you don't have a depth of understanding here. And so I just want to make some suggestions. Like I would say that first and foremost, setting strategy is the most important thing a CEO can do. It's more important than culture. If the environment zigs and you guide the company to zag, you're in a world of hurt and no amount of cultural reinforcement is going to matter much. Second, you must incorporate life cycle strategy into your strategy selection. If you don't know it or you ignore it, you're just setting yourself up for failure and your business is more important than that. And even if you disagree with me, at least you want to understand life cycle theory so you can discount what I'm saying, right? But don't go blindly into setting strategy without a deep appreciation of life cycle strategy. And you can build that deep appreciation by doing three things. One, I recommend you read my book, Organizational Physics. So part three of this book is all about life cycle strategy. It'll show you in detail what each stage really means, how to create sequencing, right? Uh, how to avoid strategic peril, strategic pitfalls. Very important part three in the book, Organizational Physics. I also recommend you do a top-level OKRs strategy survey with your leadership team, and that'll allow you to gather diverse inputs in from the leadership team about where the core business and any business units are at in their life cycle development and the level of strategic execution risk. You know, are you out of sequence? Are you out of step in any of the business units? And then the third thing I'd recommend is to read my book, Designed to Scale, which builds on these concepts and applies them more directly to structure. Appreciate your time. Use life cycle strategy to set the right strategy. And then just keep in mind that generally speaking, you want to align the structure for the life cycle stage, which means very limited structure for piloted stage, a functional structure in the nail it to early scale it stage, then evolving the structure based on the changing strategy. And if you are in a situation where you've got a laggard core business, you're going to have to somehow create a break or an escape from the legacy structure. Thanks so much for your time.